Magic Sheets are a way for you to create custom layouts to interact or display certain functions on your desk. All of it's up to you. Let's go play with them. So the first thing we want to do is open our Magic Sheet display. And we can do that by hitting the Add a Tab button. And we'll select Magic Sheets. When you open your Magic Sheet tab for the first time, you'll get this ribbon here that will allow you to select which Magic Sheet you want. Or you have the option to create a new Magic Sheet. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And that's automatically going to take us into our Magic Sheet editor space. There's a couple of areas that I want to point out here. Uh, the first is this large black area, which is your workspace. This is where we're actually going to create our magic sheet. The area up at the top of our editor is our layout toolbar. And we have a bunch of different tools to help us lay out up there. Below that section is the big section we call the object library. And that allows us to select various objects that we're going to put into our magic sheet. The section that's below that in the editor is where our object properties get determined. So as we have objects that are selected, we'll see those object properties pop up down there. And in the middle, you have a little chevron here, and that allows you to open and close your editor. So if we click on that, we are no longer editing our magic sheet, and we can interact with that. Or if we click it open, now we're into our edit space, and we can modify that magic sheet. The final thing I want to point out in this area is the quick save. Uh, because this is primarily a lighting desk and not a graphics computer, we don't do every little nudge or every little change that you do and put it into the undo queue. So if you want to save a place where you can undo back to, click your quick save button. You'll get a little check there. And if we hit our undo, you'll notice that in our undo queue, we get a magic sheet edit and a timestamp. So let's clear that off, and we'll go back to editing our magic sheet. So to start a simple magic sheet, we're going to go ahead and add a rectangle. So I'm going to scroll down in my objects area. And to put this rectangle into my magic sheet, I just click on it. That'll pick up that rectangle. And then I can just click again. And that'll drop that into my magic sheet. You don't need to click and drag for these objects. With that rectangle dropped in, I get a bunch of handles that should look pretty familiar. My green handle is a proportional stretch. So as I pull that, my object is going to stretch in both proportions. Each of my blue handles is an edge stretch. So I can stretch that object on just that edge. My white handle allows me to rotate the object. And then finally, some of my objects have pink handles. And those are point moves. So I can actually change the shape of this object. With this object still selected, I'm going to go ahead and start editing the properties of this object. In my first row here, I can deal with the color and line weight. So my first drop down here is the line weight of my object. I'm going to select something a little thicker. My next drop down is the line color. And when I click on that, I get a dialog with a bunch of different color options. So I'm going to go ahead and make this guy a nice blue. And then my last box over here is my fill color. When I click on that, I get the same color dialog. It's good to note here that we have a brightness bar. So if I want to pick colors that aren't displayed, I can change how that color picker displays. I'm going to pick a darker blue for my fill. Other things that are good to know in this color picking area are the fact that you can pick no fill, so that'll give you a clear background. Your most recently used color will always show up before your brightness bar. And if you have RGB values that you prefer to type in, you can enter those right there. We're going to look at channel color and channel intensity in just a little bit. So now that my object is customized the way that I want it to look, I want to tell it what this object is. Objects that are in Magic Sheets can be tied to various targets in the desk. So this is where we select what target this object is going to be. Click the drop down. You can see all the various things that we can make this object tied to in our show file. Also, we can do any console button that's on the console. We can select a zoom level or we can make it grab a selection. For today's example, I want this to be a group. By default, it goes to group 1. But in my target field down here, I can tell it what group number I want it to be. And for today's example, we're going to use group 8. Great. So if we scroll down in our Properties Editor, you'll notice near the bottom we get six fields. Similar to lighting drafting software, we can ascribe a field to an object, and it will show us data that's attached to that object. 
So if I'm drafting a plot and I drop in a lighting fixture, I can have my channel number, my color, my gobo, my dimmer, my fixture number, all that information automatically populate around the object. So just like lighting drafting software, I can select the fields of information that I want to show up about that object. So for this example, the first field I want is my target name. What kind of object is this? And as we know, this is a group. While I'm in here, I have a lot of options for alignment and customizing my font. If I click on my letters, I can select what font I want to use for this label. I can select the size of the font. I can use bold, italics, and underlines. And I can bring up a color picker similar to that of my object properties. The little checkerboard next to the letters gets me my alignment. So by default, this is aligned to the center of the object, but I can have it snap to the upper center, the lower right, the middle left, and so on. For today's example, we're just going to leave these guys aligned in the center. Now that I know that this is a group, I want to know what group it is. So my field 2, I'm going to assign my target ID, which will show me my group number. Great, so now I've got my group 8 object. A quick note about Magic Sheet Navigation, rolling my scroller wheel will zoom me in and out of my workspace. And clicking my right mouse button and dragging will allow me to pan my workspace. There are other functions that work as well. Control C and Control V will get me my copy and paste functions. And Control and multiple clicks can be used to select multiple objects. Great. So I'm going to zoom out and give myself a little bit of working room. So the next thing we're going to use is our quick layout tool. Up in my layout toolbar, I have my pointer. And if I drop down that menu, I get several tools. The arrow with the plus in the center gets me into quick layout. What that means is instead of clicking on the object and dropping one in, I can click on the object and drop multiple of those items in. So the things that I'm going to want to drop in are channels. And I want to drop in my psych channels. So I'm going to go ahead and start this at 56 for today. When I hit OK, my quick layout logo changes to the mode that I'm currently in. So let's come down to our object library. And instead of our shapes, we're going to go ahead and select our fixtures. Because these are psych lights, I want to grab my Celador fixture. So when I click on that object, you'll notice that it stays highlighted, and I get a little Done button that shows up in the bottom right-hand corner of my editor. Every time I drop in a fixture, it's going to add a new one for me. And for today's example, I'm going to add seven fixtures. So I should have channels 56 through 62. To get out of the quick layout mode, I just come down to Done and click that, and now I'm no longer dropping fixtures into my editor. Before we go too far, I want to change my pointer back to a standard pointer so the next object I grab, I don't accidentally drop a bunch of objects in. The next thing we want to look at is aligning these fixtures. I was a little hasty in dropping these in, and I want them to spread out nicely and align themselves. So I'll click and drag a box around all of them to select them. And then I can come up to my alignment tools. And you'll notice I have a bunch of different alignment options. For today, I want to align these fixtures to the middle. And then to give them even spacing in between, I'm going to distribute them horizontally. You'll notice that that snaps them all along their middle axis and gives them even distribution between the two furthest fixtures. Just a quick note about these alignments. These top three have to do with horizontal alignment. So align left will align all the objects to the left-hand side of the furthest left object. Align right will align all the fixtures to the right side of the furthest right object. And align center will align all of the fixtures to the center line of the centermost fixture. In this example, because these fixtures are all horizontally distributed, they would just stack one on top of another. The next three allow you to align vertically in the same sort of manner. All right. So let's get out of this menu. So just like our group button, I'm going to roll up here in my properties editor. And the one thing I want to change about my color is my fill color. The options of link to channel color and link to channel intensity will give me a dynamic background based on the actual state of those lights in live. So if I link to channel color, 
anytime I color pick these fixtures, their backgrounds will change to represent what the fixture is doing in live. Similarly, if I link to channel intensity, the object is going to be black when the fixture is off and will fade up to white or the color it's in as the fixture turns on. So let's click out of that box. And let's go ahead and add an image. In my object library, my next tab over are the images. Right now my show file doesn't have any images loaded, so I can click on the import image logo and that will open a browser for me. I can either navigate to a thumb drive that has images on it, or the Magic Sheet Editor will always expose the gobos that are in my patch. So for today, I'm going to grab the Verilite Gobo Wheel 7 and hit OK, and it'll bring that into my library. Just like any other object in my library, I can click on it and click it in the editor to drop it into my Magic Sheet. So I'm going to drag that guy over to this corner. Now I'm starting to get a pretty decent Magic Sheet. The final option that you have in your object library is your settings area. Your display behavior determines how the Magic Sheet tab interacts with your display functions. A normal display will take focus just like any other display tab. A channel display will allow you to use Shift Live to navigate to that tab. And a control display will not take focus unless it's double clicked. For now, we're going to leave ours as a normal display. Also in the settings, you have the ability to set what your live background looks like and what your blind background looks like. You can decide which one to use when you're in your editor space. And you have several different options. You can have a solid color, a gradient color, or you can import an image to be your background, such as a scenic ground plan or a light plot. Today, we're going to do gradient. And we can select our top and bottom colors. I'm going to do something very subtle. I'll do a blue and a pink. So we're going to go complete a couple of other objects. I'm going to come in, get my round rectangle. I'm going to stretch that out a little. I'm going to turn this into color palette one. For my fields, I want this to say target name for field one. I'm going to make that a size of 20. For field two, I want it to be target ID, also a size of 20. And for field three, I want to expose the label of that target. And I'm going to make that a size 25. Because this color palette one is my red color palette, I'm going to change the background to be red. The next thing I want to do is make two other buttons with color palettes two and three. Now that I've set up this whole tile, the easiest way is to copy and paste and just modify the things that I want to change about those new objects. So I'm going to hit control C, which will copy that object for me. And I'm going to hit control V twice which will drop in two more objects. I'm going to drag this guy over here. This is my color palette too, which is orange. And I want to make sure that I change the target number to two. Similarly, I'm going to grab and move that guy. I'm going to make him color palette five. So this is my light blue color palette. So again, I'm going to change my background to a nice light blue. So this is the last object I wanted to add to my magic sheet. If I want to get this magic sheet back out into live and interact with it, all I have to do is close my editor. One of the most powerful things about magic sheets is that they are fully interactive with their command line. So I'm going to go ahead and click on group eight, which will select my psych fixtures. And I'm going to put them all to full. If I come over and click on color palette one, all those channels will go to my red color palette, color palette two, and color palette five. You'll notice that as I change my colors, the background of my channels changes as well.